This is international. Big Mega Radio Smasher. It's the Going Off Podcast <laughs> with Rap Critic and Muse. And it is all Hallow's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not when... Oh, no! Obviously not when this goes live. Uh, it'll be November yeah, by th- then. We're, but... we're like the Simpsons. You know, it, Halloween's over when we say it's over, bitch. <laughs> Yo. Um, I, I don't want to go into a whole big thing about it, but did you see the new Treehouse of Horror? Oh, no. My dude. Oh, no. After I saw that one clip oh! where they were trying so hard, the flop sweat that was coming off of the, the, oh. the, the fucking digital animated cartoon. Okay, <laughs> Somehow, uh... when they were trying to make what is this motherfucker? Oh my god, I can't go back. <laughs> this uh, this wasn't much better. Um, I haven't watched a full episode of The Simpsons in it's safe to say years, like a newer one. I've I've went back and I've watched older ones, but not saw, anything the, the from the most recent episode was was good. That was the one oh, I, I never I didn't see that one. This is episode six hundred and sixty six. And for some reason, I thought they were past that by now, but no, apparently not. It's 666, and also happens to be the 30th Treehouse of Horrors. I think I might have seen 10 of them, maybe, and liked them. Oh, wow. Before I stopped watching. Yeah, there's the 19 you haven't seen. (laughs) I I just have no idea what the hell they even try to parody or anything. I couldn't even tell you what the <laughs> you last one was. You think they've gotten everything by now. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, watching this, y- y- you'd actually kind of be surprised. Uh, so, multiple times I had to make sure that I was watching this year's. <laughs> Why? Uh, because some of the references are just uh, a little a little dated. Oh, uh, my you mean guy! To, you mean to tell me they uh they 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 came to like maybe like the year two thousand and they're like oh we don't know need to know any more pop culture after this? How about it's twenty nineteen and they're just now doing a Stranger Things parody? Really? You think? Yeah, you really think they would have jumped on that? <laughs> they, they, they've had maybe like three, four years. I, I, I'm yeah, not exactly sure point. how long that show's been on. <laughs> they had that long to come up with a title of the segment. And they just called it Danger Things? Huh. Uh, uh, okay, not... okay, there's right. more. There's more. Okay, <laughs> but, yeah, how about... Yeah, because like third season now. Yeah, I'm remembering, yeah, yeah. How about also 2019, A Shape of Water parody? Uh, oh, hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, where, uh, where yeah, this Patty... Is, yeah, this is like 2017, isn't it? Yeah, where you got Patty falling in love with, uh... Krang and or uh, Kodos, uh, the uh, the space aliens. Okay. You so know, you got I, that. I, I guess they did it eventually, you know. Um, uh, there was a third one. I couldn't, I'm not even sure <laughs> I remember what it was. Um, but yeah, I would say two, maybe three genuine laughs for the entire uh, 20 some odd minutes. Really? You know, I, I've said before the writing's bad. The writing is bad. I, I'm, I'm, still st- I'm still sticking to that opinion. But the editing and the pacing is by far the worst thing about the new Simpsons. Hmm. They will just lay a horrible bomb. And you're just like, oh no. <laughs> and it just sticks there for a second. Like a second too long, mm. and you're just like, "Oh, please, cut yeah. away!" Like it's so, <laughs> it's so cringy. Like they fucking make you stew in it, and it's like, "Come on, man!" It's you like know Simpsons, that was bad. It's like The Simpsons is done by uh, uh, automation now, and all the jokes are just automate. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Automotively written and stuff like that. So the editing is still kind of messed up, like those YouTube videos, you know, that's like done in like. India or something like that, where they're just trying to profit off of making, like, you know, baby videos or something like that. It's like a similar thing. <laughs> I, I noticed something with YouTube, by the way. I don't know who else has noticed this. Um, YouTube will randomly decide to blur out parts of a video. Have you seen this? No, I haven't seen that. So, I, I think it, it's completely uh, auto-generated. I, I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to it. Um, but YouTube tries to discern what 
might be sensitive material. Like nudity? Seriously? <laughs> nudity, possible <laughs> gore, I don't know. I've, I've seen this in a few uh, Funhouse uh, videos. They're generally a Let's Play channel. Um, but every so often they do some like Rule 34 searches and stuff like that. And they'll blur things on their own. But sometimes like three quarters of the screen will just have like a giant blur over it. And, and it's there's no rhyme or reason to it. Like it's not covering anything in particular. It, it, it sometimes just almost covers the whole screen. You think they're like beta testing something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it it doesn't seem, it seems broken. And I think if they had something rolled out, we probably would have gotten an announcement about it. Well, I think they're a little bit more uh, uh, trepidatious about uh, telling people about the shitty plans they're putting forward from now on. <laughs> it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. <laughs> is the new YouTube policy basically though? Probably for the best. Here's a question for you. Mm. We've got two album reviews oh. this week. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm anxious to hear what you've got to say about both of them. <laughs> so, do you, should we just, like, should we just flip a coin? Oh, no, here? no, no. We, we got to start with clipping first. We got to start with clipping, <sighs> you know. Because cause the, 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 the main course has got to be the Kanye album. <laughs> Who is I kidding? Of course. <laughs> We gotta save that 27 minute album, I guess, for oh the my, dessert. Oh, yes, exactly. It's a smaller portion, but you know, it's like a filet mignon. It's mm -hmm. small, but it, it's gotta come after the fucking hors you, Yeah, you're gonna take longer to chew through it, you know what I mean? Oh, it's, it's fucking tough. It is a it is a tough chew. <laughs> <laughs> so what we've got in front of us here is an over an hour hors d'oeuvre in the form of there existed an addiction to blood by clipping. The title was so weird. I was just like, is there some sort of like anagram that's happening? <laughs> it's you know what it's I mean? one of those sleepers. It fucking explains itself over time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we've reviewed clipping before. We did Splendor and Misery as a Patreon request. I'm surprised we didn't just do that one uh, organically. But uh, going back and listening to the review of that one, I think we both gave it fives. Oh. And and I haven't. I honestly I haven't gone back and listened uh, to Splendor and Misery much since we did the review. I remember there being uh, some highlights to it. I like the whole space. Theme. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I remember that one. Yeah, I was thinking about another album they did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I absolutely love that album. The, the concept album, right? And now we basically... It's not a concept, but it's it's a, it's a underlining theme we have of uh, violence and horror. On Wikipedia, the album is actually categorized as horrorcore. And I don't know I if I'd that. go that... F I don't know if I'd go that far. Uh, especially with the song uh, "The Haunting," followed by "La Mala Ordina," you know what I mean. Maybe, uh, maybe the show. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that like there's key points, but yeah, it's more experimental noise rap stuff than Grave Diggers. You know what I mean? It's yeah, not this like, isn't yeah. fucking Grave Diggers or goddamn ICP. Let's not yeah. <laughs> let's not go yeah. down no. that road. <laughs> Darren, it's come to this. Mm. There existed an addiction to blood. What did you think? You you can only say that phrase as if, like, you're trying to do a Shakespearean, like, recitation. There existed an addiction to blood is the name of the album. Like, I just sound like I'm about to break into a prose, you know? Like, <laughs> but, There's um... There's gotta be more to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, okay, so the first th words that came to my head when I was listening to this album was controlled minimalism. Oh, okay. And uh, so the f now the first track I didn't really like as much because it was just like him rapping through this really badly recorded filter, and it was mm. just like like I understand you know you know stretching sound and doing all these weird things, but it was like I I just didn't enjoy that because it was just a simple like like it was just like filtered enough where it's just like I just had to go like wait wait what did he say there wait oh, wait what did he say there mm. you know like it's not distorted enough where it's like oh it's so crazy what's happening like later it's like just enough where it's like. Oh, what? <laughs> like, he recorded it in a, you know, styrofoam cup or some shit. <laughs> it does sound like it's uh, being played on a tape recorder. You hear someone, like, 
click the off oh, button. Oh, that's true, that's true, that's true. I forgot about that. The, the intro, um, yeah, it's more or less like, I mean, it definitely is an intro. It's not very much a standalone uh, track. It paints the picture, sort of, of at least the atmospheric feel that you're going to be... Uh, just sitting in for the rest of the album you you just hear like the wind in the background you hear people walking i wouldn't have thought it was this specifically but genius pointed out that it could uh, have been the sounds of shovels uh scraping and digging and it just sounds like yeah and in the midst of all this this random clipping verse this like acapella it doesn't feel related to, it, it, like it again. It's just I think there. It was just, yeah, it was just and it, it was just hard to hear it anyway. So like it started off on a mm. bad foot, but okay. I actually really liked uh, "Nothing Is Safe." So that just like flipped it on me. Like, oh man, he's gonna be experimental and do all this crap that I can't fucking hear. And, uh, and then "Nothing Game Is Safe" comes out. I was like, oh, oh okay, never mind. All right, all right, we're good. We're good. <laughs> when you hear the boom, boom, doom, doom, I'm like, okay, oh. I'm here. I'm ready for this shit. And he just like starts laying out this rap. And and his style is just like more, you know, that ghost face killer type abstract rap t- sort of shit. But it's like if you listen, you can hear what he's actually talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah. I did come with a problem or two with that later on down the line, but with this one was one of those, like, the atmosphere is perfect, you know, the time is right, I'm with, I'm riding with this shit, this should have been track number one, goddammit, <laughs> you know? They're setting this atmosphere and this tone, and I think the intro does that well, but throughout the album, there are these um, interludes that just kind of, like, pop in. And they're not always related. And again, all these are fine elements, I think, in their own. Right, in and of themselves, so like setting the tone or whatever, you know. Yeah, but overall there isn't like, and I wish there was, a story that kind of weaves its way throughout. Kind of like Splendor and Misery was a concept. Well, yeah, like the perfect uh, the perfect example is Haunting, where it's like, very specifically, this woman is talking about like, these horrible things happened to me and I was, you know, a bat flew at my head and this, that and the third, da da da. And the next track is like, it's kind of about that, I guess. But like, by the second verse, it's just kind of gangster rap shit. And it's cool as shit, though, because I, I like, I especially love the way the beat drops out when the second guy comes in. And you're just kind of like in this hazy place where you're not sure what's happening. Because I feel like the beat kind of like jumps off for a second. And you're like, what the fuck? And then the beat like just slowly slams and hits and then slowly comes back in again. And I'm like, oh shit, that was just fucking cool. You know? Yeah, haunting is. And I'm, I'm going to guess this is like a real thing that exists. Uh, just audio of a woman talking about a uh, time she believes that she was haunted uh, by Satan trying to kill her. And all these like series of hallucinations. Uh, and, th- and then the next track doesn't really have anything to do with that. If the haunting would have been before he dead, that actually would have worked better. Because that song was like really sparse and creepy. Prophecy is just noises. It's like, it sounds like something may be burning. And then there's, like, growl noises, and then Run For Your Life doesn't really expand on that. But Possession, Interlude, and All In Your Head are, like, that actually does work as a introduction to what mm. All In Your Head is about. Because All In Your Head is about, like, we'll get to it, but it's <laughs> about, like, a form of, like, being possessed, and it, it kind of builds off on that. You know, I didn't think about that until... Holy shit. Okay, I actually, that's actually pretty clever now that you say it. <laughs> I never put that together. <laughs> I was gonna uh, dog ear that page, but, I mean, while we're fucking here, Possession <laughs> uh, is a movie sample of this person performing hypnosis and, in turn, um, uh, possessing uh, this woman through uh, through his words, reading this like mm. incantation, perhaps, and it's so straight out of like a <laughs> silly ass fifties horror movie. Oh yeah, it absolutely <laughs> reeks of that shit. But you know what? It's In like, this context, it works. Yeah, like this woman's like, "Doctor, will you help me?" And he's like, "Yes, young child. <laughs> Rest is good for the blood." Like, yeah, of course you trust a guy like that. Like, <laughs> you, you trust a guy with some vaguely like, Transylvanian <laughs> accent. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, twirling his mustache. Um, but all in your head is more or less a song about possessing someone through oral sex. Oh, I thought it was about like pimping because like the woman in the middle of the verse is like. <laughs> I think the first part 
kind of does talk about like eating pussy or like performing mm. or- oral sex, whatever. And then the second part opens with like halfway through the alphabet, and that's kind of like a like a technique. Oh, You're supposed yeah, to like true, true. do the shapes it, yeah. of the letters, and mm. then it's like halfway through the alphabet, you'll have her speaking like your thoughts and stuff like that, and like all in your head. Okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> and this album does do a lot of clever shit, but I think that was um I I wasn't expecting that. Speaking of unexpected, the outro of All in Your Head, where it's just a choir? It's, okay, so this is what I was confused by, because I was like, alright, this song's about possession, and then, like, this woman's talking about how you need to pimp these bitches the right way, because if you do it wrong, then you're not a real pimp, and da 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 and I was like, where's this? I mean, this is cool, but what? where is this coming from? <laughs> it sounds like that fucking... Hey, I wanna come, motherfucker! Going back real quick to, uh, to Nothing Is Safe, so we could just kind of... Uh, go through here. When you said controlled minimalism, mm-hmm. I think that is personified very well in Nothing is Safe, which kind of plays off this John Carpenter-esque Halloween uh, film score. And even when you watch the music video, it's even modeled after the intro to the Halloween movie, where instead of a jack-o'-lantern with like a flame inside of it, it's like a trash can with, like, a fire inside it with the jack-o'-lantern face, like, carved into it. And I think throughout, there are there are a lot of nods to different types of, like, horror movie genres, but not, not like, Misfits, if, if anyone listening is, like, familiar with how, like, the Misfits were. Like, it was just straight up, like, yeah, this is a song about the fly. We're not referencing that shit, but we are lifting elements and kind of, wor- like, weaving them through. Story 7... Where I was like halfway through, I was like, what's happening in this song? Like, I legit was trying to figure it out. And then I, I had to look at the annotation. It's like, oh, uh, BT Dubs, uh, Cynthia is a wolf. And this whole time, she's like, I'm like, what? Wait, where did the wolf thing come in? It's like, oh, she's a werewolf, of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The minimalism leads to a lot of creative ideas. Uh, one in particular, yeah, like you said, club, uh, club down, shut the club, club down. down. Fuck, club yeah. down. <laughs> at first, oh, at first, when fuck. he just said the turn the lights off, we go shut the club down. I wasn't feeling it at first. I was like, oh, he's trying to go for the club hit. Like, what, what, what are you doing, man? You know. But then when it just like becomes this anti-club song with no beat underneath it, just like these weird scouring, just weird sounds, like boom. It was so. It was like this fucking album was a uh, uh, scored by um. Who's the dude who did the Dark Knight movies? Hans Zimmer. Uh, (laughs) It's loud and it's intense, but there's under the gritty layer of noise and something kind of resembling a beat, you just hear like screaming. And that's from the group uh, 16 Bitch (laughs) Pileup. What? Nine Inch Dicks and, <laughs> and Sixty Inch Pilot touring now <laughs> with Shorty Shit Stain. <laughs> Run for your life, dude! My favorite goddamn track. Oh my god! <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> the way the fucking uh, uh, we're talking about the same one, right? Where like at first it starts off and then like the beat drops out and then like you feel like, oh, is this gonna be the rest of the song? It's just gonna be rapping like this. And then you hear, like, a car go by, and there's, like, a beat playing in that car. And then, like, he starts rapping to that beat, and I was like, oh, shit! (laughs) And then, like, that car passes, and then another car goes by, like, yo, what the fuck? The beat is just made up of noises in the background, and, like, guns shooting off, and dogs (laughs) barking, and, like you said, um... Music in dry and passing by cars, and he even switches up like the tempo of like his raps yeah. when the BPM is different. I love it. <laughs> I, I really liked the the chorus and the uh, you ain't scared, is you? I oh like yeah, like, <laughs> now, you ain't scared, is it? I, I, I didn't like uh, her voice at the beginning, but I liked her verse and her uh, voice at the end. It's like she recorded a different version of the chorus later on. I liked her interjections. In the chorus, I hated that verse. You didn't like a verse? <laughs> that verse is straight garbo, dude. It's like 
the most sub ICP level horrorcore lyrics. I just gotta pull it up real quick. All right, yeah, let me look at it. Maybe, maybe I I was tripping. I couldn't (laughs) believe how like this song set me up, especially with like how interesting it was and all the and the way it was the the producing with the noises and all of that. It was like one of the most unique uh, hip hop songs I'd heard in a while. And then just this fucking yeah, um, it is a little like. Compared to what was happening before, it's like, oh, now we're just doing horrorcore? Yeah, you're right. It's LaChat, the killer, the murderer, the bitch they love to hate. Yeah, you tried to run, but I caught you. You know it's no escape. Burn up both your legs, split your head. But yeah, your mouth all right. Throw your garbage ass in the dumpster, and now shit on your grave. Yeah. Yeah. Blood, I'm so addicted to blood, I'm cutting your body up. And it's like, ugh. Nothing, like, creative or, like, interesting to any of the words here. It's just basic-ass horrorcore shit. Burn up both your legs, split your head, but yeah, your mouth all right? What? Is she leaving the mouth? Yeah, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I got from that. It's like, I I don't know, your mouth looks really good. I was going to do something to it, but... uh. How about Drama Queen... I'm bringing the drama. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> I'll, I'll hunt you. Cut you up like meat. Take your kids. A very tasty <laughs> luncheon. Dude, I forgot. Ugh. <laughs> Boo. And I hate it because they really did just like, this was gearing up to be my favorite song on the album. And then it ended up being <coughs> maybe my least favorite because of that. Really? Actually, actually, no, it's not my least favorite, but we'll okay. get to that. Mm. Um, the show following Run For Your Life, I thought was another one of the uh, a little weaker tracks, in my opinion. Me too. Uh, I didn't like how, like, it was, you know, interesting at first to hear, like, what the beat's doing. But the fact that it never go- really goes beyond that, like, you're the boom, and like you know i don't know like the industrial just like sounding like you're hammering in a you know uh factory like i just it's just not that cool of a sound to me you know like not like nine inch nails couldn't get me into it and he's not going to either you know what i mean but it's like but but there's a little flip because like after every time he, he does that it sounds like someone's like you know t- uh putting their uh, tapping their fingers on like a light bulb or something like that and i'm like that sounds kind of cool when you're like boom ding and then <laughs> it's like okay but then like it's just not that interesting of a song altogether and it, it again does the sort of like breaking apart into just noise thing except this time it's just like annoying you know blood on the fang blood on the fang i actually really liked that might be tied for my favorite song on the album shit i don't know it's really fucking good. Specifically, when uh, when he get to that got to that one part, you know, again up to this point, there's been like you know horrorcore elements with mostly like abstract, you know, weird sort of stuff. Then he just like cuts the bullshit and just says like Queen Angela done told y'all grasp at the root. So what y'all talking about? Hands up, don't shoot. I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> fucking revolutionary talk over here. <laughs> yeah, this was the track that just straight up addresses uh, police brutality and white supremacy in a much more in your face approach than I've heard uh even some more of the more political uh rappers we've talked about. Brother Malcolm Dunn told y'all by any means. So what you talking about all on the same team? <laughs> I was like, oh <laughs> like it's getting more incendiary the more the song goes on. <laughs> it's it's weird. It managed to be one of the more political more in your face but it ended up being one of the catchiest overall i also, love a little sample in the background there existed an addiction to blood, blood, blood. Oh. that was crazy the way they use that shit it works so yeah. well uh, oh my sto- god the, story- that, that's my favorite track <laughs> my favorites overall are Blood of the Fang, mm. uh, Club Down, mm. and Nothing is Safe. I think those are the three strongest. Highlights. Yes, absolutely. Uh, story 7. Something we didn't mention, but no two songs on this album are really... I was going to say the same, but they're not absolutely even like... Not. 
They're not even similar. Like, yeah. <laughs> the, the fucking cadence on Story 7. I, I, I can't read the lyrics and imitate oh it because my I honestly God. don't remember. He was like 15, so choppy. or some shit. <laughs> it's so fucking choppy and like yeah. it, it, it keeps changing and it's like never to the same beat. It's like, oh, fuck. All right. I was just going to talk about the, uh, the catchiest track. On the whole album, piano burning. <laughs> oh yeah, weren't you tapping your toe? <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, um, so it's eighteen, eighteen, eighteen <laughs> solid ass minutes of a piano burning, literally a piano burning, to where you you hear the strings snapping mm-hmm. and striking, and like, yeah, sounds cool. I don't know what it's doing here. Uh, literally, I wrote down, this is an interesting concept. I don't want to listen to it. <laughs> not, not for 18 minutes. Like, if this was, like, one of those minute to minute and a half interludes yeah, throughout right? the album, that's fine. 18 minutes, though. The only thing I can say is I'm glad you left it for the end so I could skip it. Yeah, it's like, you can't have expected anyone to listen to this. Could you? <laughs> uh, I'll just shut the album off after story seven. We can call it a day. And, We're and, good. You know, it's funny. Uh, so in the Genius Annotation, it said uh, the instructions from the original piece, because this is taking from like a classical music piece. Yeah, right? I, su- I uh, saw that. Yeah, yeah. Set an upright piano in an open space with the lid closed. Spill a little lighter fluid on a twist of paper and place inside near the pedals. Light it. And uh, balloons may be stapled to the piano. <laughs> like, I love that that's an instruction. But the final... You know, just in case you're feeling frisky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And the final uh, instruction is, play whatever pleases you for as long as you can. I love that. <laughs> for as long as you can. And yeah. that's the thing that annoyed me, though. Was like, there was no commitment to the bit. Why wasn't he playing something on the piano? <laughs> yeah, he didn't even try. <laughs> Just, nope, too hot, too scary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Flames got too high, too quick. Couldn't play anything. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> so overall uh what, what would you give it my official rating fell somewhere between a four and a four and a half i'm gonna go ahead and give it the four and a half the only shortcomings for me were the lachette verse in run for your life uh the show wasn't as strong of a track as some of the other ones especially given how uh, violent and you know it was trying to be very shocking and attunement just as a underwhelming uh, outro but the rest is is a strong recommendation I fucking bought it on Bandcamp like soon as I listen to it as soon as I finish I'm, I'm awaiting a physical copy in the mail as we speak uh, I give it a three and a half out of five Wow, uh, okay. Yeah, like the, the songs that like again, you know when I wrote down this is an interesting concept I, I don't want to listen to it I don't feel that way about the whole album because, like, uh, like when I first came into it, I was like, "Oh yeah, this is Cliffy, the guys that are really experimental." And when I came to the piano part, that's when I thought of that. But it was like, and I could see other parts of this album where I'm like, "It's interesting that you did that," but I don't really want to listen to Static. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I I just don't. <laughs> like, I don't need to. You know what I mean? Obviously, we we need to save all the energy for mm. the album that I'm sure you no doubt enjoyed way more. Tell us what you came to see, people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Again, for reference, I went back and I listened to our review of Yay. Oh, me too. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I was thinking, like, you know, are we being a little... Are, are, could we possibly have a little bias in our system, right? I you know. thought the same damn thing, Darren. And I <laughs> wanted to make sure uh, we, respectively, you gave Yay... A three and a half, ultimately, mm-hmm. and I ended up giving it a motherfucking uh, four. four. I was surprised. I was like, oh, okay. I gave Yay a four. <laughs> and I haven't even gone back and re listened to that album since. <laughs> what am I doing? I obviously liked it. So I'm thinking, like, oh, okay. So, like, yeah, all right, let me go into this. You know, Sherry's doing the Christian thing, and there's a lot of awkwardness that's around, like, not even his public persona, as far as everyone knows, but as far as, like, the creation of this album in particular. Like, there was some shit about, like, he asked that the people creating the album didn't have sex while he was making it. Premarital sex specifically, yes. What type of fucking shit is that? (laughs) I'm gonna let the audience speculate whether or not 
Kanye is being uh, 100% uh, genuine with this, hmm. but there are some aspects. The, hey, nobody have premarital sex working on my album, to I'm going to have a song that is essentially a commercial for Chick-fil-A. Oh, my God. I get the impression that Kanye... That, that Kanye, like, wants to pander... But he doesn't know how. What would someone making a Christian album in 2019 do? No premarital sex, right? That makes <laughs> sense. You gotta shout out Chick Fil A. Like, did he consult with anybody? Yeah, this exactly. This feels like this album legit feels like he was in church when he was younger, and then he left. And like 20 years later, like this is kind of like what Christianity is like, right? <laughs> it's like I mean, I, I guess. Fuck. Yeah, okay, so let's fucking get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Cause uh, I got a question for you. Uh, I got a question for you. Mm. With all the hype and build up, did you end up disliking this album as much as you thought you would? I ended up disliking this album a lot more than I thought I would. Hmm. Like a lot more. <laughs> like I, I listened back to uh, um not only our review of uh yay but also our review of um was one before that one the life of pablo and we actually rated that one lower we <laughs> we waited rated that one like a one and a half or maybe a two i have my beautiful dark twisted fantasy i uh -huh. think i might have college dropout on there yeah, who I doesn't never, you know i never settled down and got Jesus, even though there are songs on there that that i do enjoy and would like to revisit from time to time i don't think i ever want to listen to life of pablo ever again though yeah I, well i remember I'm what, good my biggest complaint was that it's like any of the songs that I do like, it feels like he always does something that ruins the enjoyment of it. <laughs> and uh, they were like... You the can't like it 100%. Yeah, and there were these dumb skits that. in it. Now, with this album, oh. no skits, 27 minutes, clean, short Bone album. ads. Uh, exactly. But, <laughs> oh my lord, is this a bad fucking album. So, track one... We get now, now, and you know, I want to come to this, you know, legit with y'all. You know, I I grew up a uh, uh, Christian and, and what have you. Know, I still have my, uh, you know, uh, I I I'm still a part of the faith, but I have my own uh, perennialist leanings. You know what I'm saying? You know, I I will necessarily need to get to it, get into it. But the point is, eh, I know a little bit about you know Christianity and all this fun stuff that he's gonna get to. And it's like I was thinking going into this stuff. Okay, you know, how what's he gonna do? How's he gonna wrestle with it? What's it? Nah, he's not. It's just a fucking plain ass, milk toast ass fucking uh, Christian rap album telling you that you should love the Lord and with no nuance, no like specificity, no stories, nothing intricate. Like, okay, you remember the song uh, How Much a Dollar Cost on Kendrick Lamar's fucking album? Y yeah. That mm -hmm. is to me the measure by which all other Christian rap songs have to be measured. <laughs> remember how the, uh, Life of Pablo album started with, uh, no. you know, uh, uh, <laughs> ultralight beam, we're on an ultralight beam, uh, Jesus, get the fucking choir singing, and holy Jesus, Lord, and all in the, oh, glory, glory, hallelujah, and then the first track is, if I get bleach on my t-shirt, and I fuck this girl who's a model, and she's got bleach on her ass, and if I fuck her, I'm gonna get bleach on my shirt. Are you fucking serious? I'ma feel like an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> now, this album doesn't do that necessarily, <laughs> but it's basically <laughs> no. the same setup. Like, the very first song, and again, I want to say, like, as someone who, you know, like, knows a bit about Christianity, you know what I'm saying? Knows a bit about, you know, choir music, you know what I'm saying? Like, I actually went to school, like, to learn about music and shit, and part of what we do is, like, choir music, you know what I mean? So, like, you know, I know what's, what sounds dope, you know, what sounds creative and fun, hearing it, you know what I'm saying? Hearing how people have done choir music in a way that's interesting, this is in no way interesting. Track one is absolutely a zero. It's just, like generic ass fucking we praise this name and god and glory and it's just like no creativity no creative musical lines nothing it is a boring fucking intro like they might as well have just played the fucking hallelujah hallelujah on track two that goes on for a goddamn minute and a half they say hallelujah 40 fucking times on that track and it's like like you're hearing it as you're hearing it you're just like hallelujah hallelujah and you're like oh snap really intense and by the 30th hallelujah you're like <laughs> Okay, is this gonna 
is is, right. is the record fucking <laughs> skipping? Like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> How is this happening on an MP3? I'm confused. <laughs> like, halfway, th- it's like, it almost sounds like a troll record, but it doesn't commit enough to it, you know? <laughs> And, and like, right at the end, like, the final Hallelujah work does the, ah, like, where it gets really cool. I was like, oh, shit, here we go. But I still had to wait way too long for it, so it doesn't, I, I'm really not feeling it right at this point. <laughs> yes, it wasn't fucking worth it, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. Um, I ended up liking the album more than I thought I was going to. Ugh. All right. And- <laughs> not no, by so- much. I just, oh, my. <laughs> Okay, here's... This is an abomination, bro. <laughs> here's what I did like. Okay. Some really dope beats on here. Oh, okay, see, see, all Follow right. Follow God, on God, everything we need. See, th- um, this is... Yeah, yeah. Water th- has a good one. Yeah, like, Water does have a good every- Fucking, really, the production on here is pretty damn good. The only song on the album that I would potentially listen to again is uh follow god the third track not even that one bro <laughs> what how does that one go uh uh let me let me let me get it just to be sure if it's the one i think it is oh my god life like what is what your life like tell me what your life like if you name christ like every living life like in a single night right when with the night light and i'm feeling christ like is i feeling like mike what, what's your life like what, oh my fucking god shut the fuck up kanye shut the fuck up you know that ain't christ like <laughs> Dude, oh my god. I was so annoyed. I was just like, what is he doing? What is he doing? <laughs> uh, I think if that song, and I, and I know what you're going to say, <laughs> if that song was a little longer and it had maybe some time to flesh itself just out. Just anything else happening other than the, I feel like, Mike, tell me what you like, like, feeling like Excite Bike? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, he, he fucking references a goddamn Nintendo video game for He's some reason. He's riding on a white bike, feeling like Excite Bike. White bike, Excite Bike, yeah. Not his strongest run. I don't know if it's better or worse than Closed on Sunday. You uh, my Chick-fil-A. Horrible. You my number one with the lemonade. Fucking Dead atrocious. Ren! What the fuck are you talking about? Closed on Sunday, you're my chick. Who? Who is closed on Sunday? <laughs> Who are you talking on about? Sunday? What does that mean? Yeah, because he's saying closed on Sunday, you're my chick. For like, oh, who? Who are you talking about? Who was emotionally closed off to you <laughs> on one specific day? Like what? What? Like, and so like, I'm forced to think the only reason you did that was because, haha, clever tie-in. Get it? I'm Christian, so Chick Fil A. I fucking looked up video of his uh, Sunday service performance where where he brought out clips and we'll get to clips and he brought out kenny g and we'll get to kenny g (laughs) and there's this whole thing and it fucking opened up with this epic in your face choir and they're just Mm. singing their fucking hearts out oh and then you feel the spirit of the lord (laughs) and then like not even a beat after they're just they're jumping they're fucking they're giving it they're all Closed on Sunday, you my chick fil like you you opened <laughs> with closed on Sunday and like Kanye, come on! And dude, the beat in the background, you couldn't find a more fucking solemn, quiet, chilled out. Ooh, oh yeah, ooh, ooh. No. and so like you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The beat work is there, but he's like fuck it. It feels like someone halfway through is like. Like, his cousin came through and just, like, joked on the album that he was supposed to do. Like, no, this is supposed to be the Lord's album. What are you doing talking about Chick-fil-A? It's the Lord's uh, uh, favorite restaurant, is it? <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> Except it's actually just him. And you're like, why are you ruining your own album? <laughs> Nobody ever tell you when you're being like Christ. Only ever seeing me when they needing me. Like if Tyler Perry made a movie for BET? Huh? What? Um, they only ever see me when they're needing me. Like, yeah. if Tyler Perry made a movie for BET? Only what? see me. It feels like a riddle. Only see <laughs> <Right>? me <laughs> when you need me. Okay, so only want you around when they feel like they can get something out of you. Okay, so he's saying 
Yeah. That, that that's like... If like, Tyler like, Perry... Like, BET doesn't want to have anything to do with Tyler Perry unless he's, like, making a movie for them? I, but I, I don't guess. think he's, like... I think people hold him in pretty high regard these days, don't like, they, Tyler I, Perry? I figure, I mean, I figure BET would probably want to work with Tyler Perry, right? Well, That's a pretty sure, big gift. but Tyler Perry isn't about to. He just fucking opened up his own goddamn movie studio. Like, he's a busy man. D- do you think Tyler Perry is going to lower himself to the standards of made-for-TV movie? Like, I think that's the point, but... So, what? So okay, so what he's trying to say is they're only seeing me if they need me in the same way that if Tyler... Because he wouldn't make a movie for BET, right? Yeah. He, oh, no, of course not. No. Yeah, that... Mm-hmm. Okay. I, 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 I think, mean, I'm I think trying. I got what this man. <laughs> <I'm> trying, <laughs> like, I, I, I fucking think I got what that man. <laughs> <laughs> like I heard uh, it, and it didn't raise a red flag for me. I was like, I think I get that. I'm a <laughs> See, <laughs> this is the problem right here. It's it, it's you and all these interviewers who interview Kanye who just gotta go like, I don't know what it is, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> like remember remember that fucking interview where uh, I think uh, JPEG Mafia sampled it, where it's like someone's interviewing him and he's like, yeah, we used to make music back in the day. We like we made JPEGs, you know. <laughs> I had to like, sample that in the intro. Yeah, it goes. I was like, they were saying we didn't go to school. <laughs> we went to school, all right. We was making JPEGs. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, Charlemagne, Charlemagne the God didn't just stop him right exactly. when he said that in his empty ass house <laughs> and say, "Excuse me, what? Yeah. You were, you were, ma- so what? You were just like in Microsoft Paint and you were just making JPEGs. What does that like, mean? At school? Is this a metaphor? You what were are you on talking your school about? Computer in the library and you were making JPEGs." Explain that for me, Kanye. But no, was that a class? <laughs> he's just sitting there, smiling along, because he gets to he gets to he gets this scoop. He gets the exclusive half exactly. hour interview with Kanye, so he's not gonna try to he's not gonna do the fucking uh, sway interview. Fucking actually <laughs> trying to throw some shit back at him. No, this is a this is a new day. It's a new Kanye. Everyone's afraid to say anything. It's like. It's like no one wants to say anything to Trump because they don't want to lose the access, right? Mm. Like, yeah, I yeah, I, I yeah. Get, I don't want to get my press pass. See what happened revoked. this way, I think. <laughs> right, maybe. Like, I want, I want, to, I want to be in good with the man so I can maybe get an interview with him later. So no one wants to, no one wants to push any of those buttons that might piss him off too much. So everyone's just kind of letting him get away with whatever nonsense he wants to say and they'll keep reporting it because they know it's going to get clicks and it perpetuates a horrible cycle that keeps this fool relevant which should stop mm-hmm. but won't stop can't stop like take that take that <laughs> now with on god he's going to put it on god mm. um one line You're again one goddamn rhyme for the whole fucking song. Really, bro? <laughs> I, I want to run this by you. I want to I wanna run it back. That's why I charge. The price is that I charge. What? I can't be out here dancing with the stars. No, I cannot let my family starve. Because that's something Kanye is worried about, I guess. <laughs> that's something Kanye and Kim keeps, Kardashian keeps him West up at night. keeps him up at night. Oh, whew. I'm so worried, Charlemagne. Remember, remember when I told that story about how someone pulled a gun on Kim, and oh my gosh, I, it just, whew, it just ruined me. It's like, okay, I get that because you want to protect her. You, you just said that. God's, by the grace of God, you are given what? $60 million in taxes? Yeah, 60 million. Because you were born again Christian. <laughs> but meanwhile, that's why, in, in spite of that, I gotta sell these pair of Sunday service socks for like 40 fucking dollars. Have to, have to. Because I can't. I refuse 
Mm. To let my family starve. <laughs> ah. How'd you okay. get so much favor on your side, Kanye? <laughs> Accept him as your lord and savior, I replied. Uh, Dude, this is so up its <laughs> own fucking ass. No one would listen to this if this was a, a normal Christian rapper. God, no God. one would be tolerating this. Everyone would be like, oh, wow, yeah, I don't want to hear that shit. There's a fucking lyric on here. Hold on a second. Let's fucking, let's get into it. Uh, um, there's a lyric on here where fucking cool ass Kanye, <laughs> Kanye says, cool. he says fucking, Hey kids, put down the Instagram and hold hands with your family and pray. <laughs> put down the gram, you kids always on the Instagram <laughs> pull, and pull your pants up while you're at it. <laughs> oh no, he's going full Cosby. Oh no. What the fuck is this, man? <laughs> He went fucking full MC goddamn hammer. Oh, no. He's got to pray a... just to make it today. That's why he's exactly. trying $40 for socks. <laughs> I can't believe that there's no way. I haven't seen anyone's review of this, but I'm like, there's no way people are feeling this. What's the... Uh, oh, my God. Uh, the the first lyric uh, uh, from the song, um, um, Salah, right? We haven't heard a lyric from him yet, right? Because the first song is completely this choir. This, it's you know, just the Sunday service choir, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's, okay, we didn't even talk about this, but mm -hmm. this is why I hate every hour. And, like, on its own, it's, it's whatever. It, it's not, it's, you know, it's not really hurting anyone. But mm -hmm. what I hate about it is that you can tell it's like this weird snippet. Of what's clearly a bigger piece. Oh, Just yeah, yeah. Randomly selected. Yeah. Placed here to open the album for some reason. And it's gotta be. There's this weird effect on it that makes it sound like warbled. Like a it's slightly bit. sped up or something? Did you get yeah, that too? There's something uncanny about it that makes it unlistenable. And otherwise, it would have been a decent opening track, I guess. But then what do you have is the other option. Jesus is Lord. Where, again, it's like 30 seconds, maybe? Dude, that pissed me off the most. The last track, that one pissed me off because I thought that was the best production on that, the whole fucking album. That and you started potential. To hear, you started to hear the fucking old school, you know, the, the chill-ass trumpets that Kanye used on the first album. Oh, yeah. da, 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 and I'm like, okay. Oh. Like, yo, if this was on a good <laughs> album, this would be the part where it's like, oh, shit, you guys are feeling the spirit of the Lord right now. And I would be on board with it. Even though I didn't like what it came before it. Fuck it. I'm feeling this. And then not even, like, 40 seconds. And he just, like, cuts it off. I'm like, what? What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> like, you just teased me with an actual good song, and he was like, ah, fuck you. <laughs> he, <laughs> what on in one the hand, world? <laughs> on one hand, he's saying, hey, you thought you were excited for, for Yandi, <laughs> but then Jesus Christ did the laundry. Uh, uh. And, and the thing is, that album isn't even coming out, so he's just referencing some... <laughs> He scrapped Yandi, <laughs> perhaps in favor of this, and then he has the nerve to, on the album he's giving you, he decided that was fit for release. On the last track of the album, tease you like the bastard he really is. <laughs> Decides to give you a half minute of... What could have been the best song on the album? Honestly. And then just cuss it off. Why? Why, if not, to be a dick? Right? <laughs> it, it feels like there's an album he's hiding from us. <laughs> what other reason could he possibly have for doing that? There's no logical excuse for that. The horns were phenomenal. It sounded so fucking good. And if you maybe put this 30 second thing as the intro mm. it, it wouldn't be so bad because it's like yeah, okay it's the intro it's whatever 
But you yeah, saved you'll forget it, for it by the, the end. end. <laughs> yeah, the most, you the thing I'm going it. to remember the most is oh. that you started making a good song. <laughs> oh. After all of this shit, you started making a good song and then stopped. <laughs> make me so mad, Kanye. You make me so mad. I just want to quote the the first lyric you hear again because we got sidetracked. Oh, right? Yes. Kanye's turned over a new leaf. He's living for God. The personality you knew before is no more. Kanye is a different man. Prepare. In fact, later on in the album, he talks about, uh, he opines about, oh, wh- when I said I was uh, making a Christian album, what did the Christians say, huh? Oh, they were the first ones to turn their nose up at me. Oh, I bet I bet they're kicking themselves now from this beautiful piece of uh, uh, Christian music that brings people into the way of the Lord with these wonderful lyrics uh, uh, that I would like to, rec- that I would like to uh, recitate. <clears throat> when I get to Heaven's Gates... <laughs> I don't have to peek over. Keep in perfect composure. When I scream at the chauffeur, I ain't mean, I'm just focused. I ain't mean, I'm just focused! <laughs> Welcome to the new God-loving Kanye, who is so much nicer. And is like, look, what the fuck is that? Like, the first thing you hear is, nope, Kanye absolutely has not changed and is probably still very much on edge. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, what, what the fuck? Like, it just completely subverts anything in the first 10 seconds and i'm just sitting here like again i'm like it's like a joke album but the joke didn't really happen you know what i mean oh i couldn't believe it when i heard the very first lyrics like obviously showcasing why you are not a person who should be making an album like this like again again i say to you if any other christian if fucking lecrae started off his album saying (laughs) I don't need to peek over Heaven's Gates because I know I'm getting in. No one would fucking listen to this guy. But I guess it's Kanye, so it's like, oh, but he's such a, you know, you expect him to be a, you know, a pig-headed ass. So it's like, okay, but, like, you still don't have, like, if there was that pig-headedness, but at least there was a fucking message, but you don't even fucking get that. I think, like, one point, there's a lyric where he says, uh, uh, in, in Luke, uh, chapter 15, it says, be good to your neighbor. There's like one fucking lyric where he references the Bible. And that's fucking it. (laughs) And all the other references are like things that are like tangential. Again, like the Christianity on this album feels like fucking window dressing. Like it's just like, oh yeah, you should follow God. And I was arguing with my dad and he said that's not Christ-like. And what's the fucking thing he says at the end of the song? It's just just stupid. Like it doesn't mean anything. I woke up this morning. I said my prayers. uh, I'm all doing good. You know, I tried to talk to my dad. uh, I gave him, I tried to give him some advice. He started spazzing on me. I started spazzing back. He said that ain't Christ-like. I said, ah! What the fuck does that mean? (laughs) Who gives a shit that you were talking with your dad and you were trying to give him advice? First of all, you already sound like an asshole here. I was trying to give my dad advice. Oh yeah, the older guy needs advice from you, Kanye. (laughs) You know what I mean? When I calmly but sternly demand my damn croissants, (laughs) I'm not mean. I'm just focused. I'm not mean! (laughs) Exactly! I'm just... (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the guy I want to follow. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, sign me up. Feels like he's trying to tell you something, and he just can never really do it. Because I remember there was like one point where he said, like, he actually like hadn't read that much of the Bible, <laughs> and it was like he was doing all these Sunday church services, and that was what that whole spazzing out on his dad was about. His dad was apparently telling him, like, wait, how are you gonna have Sunday service and no gospel? And it's just like. Yeah, that's a really good fucking question. <laughs> and, and like, you know what? Fuck it. If uh, I remember I was talking to a friend about this. Like, you know, if you want to do your own new age, like, thing, like, do that thing. And, like, but don't try to attach it to this religion that you're obviously don't, like, aren't looking that deeply into. Because yeah. just, you just seem like you're exploiting it. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the biggest criticisms I've seen is that it just kind of comes off like he is just using this... Um, Almost, uh, and I'm pretty sure we've compared Kanye to Eric Cartman at least once. <laughs> it, fe- it feels like we had to have by now. Um, the, yeah, like when Cartman was like, hey, I'm going to start a fucking Christian rock group. Ah, uh, yeah! <laughs> and Kanye it, like, fucking Faith Plus One head ass. <laughs> With his earlier albums, I remember like also having this feeling of like, you know, he's talking about how like, Oh, uh, you know, I'm talking to God, and this album is me having a conversation with God, all this sort of stuff. But it's just like, 
It just sounds like you want to be God and you want to be that powerful, like, th like you have a literal song saying, I am a God, hurry up with my damn croissants. It feels like he does not come to this religion because he wants to, you know, be a more, uh, a better person, a, a more humble person. He wants to see how he can help people, you know, uh, spiritually or anything like that. It, it doesn't feel like there's any of that there. It just feels like, like you said, oh, God's like really big. So I'm going to be on God's side because he's the winner, you know, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Like, he really does feel like a child. Like, uh, against all this religious shit, like, uh, again, I feel like the fucking, uh, he's the kid at the beginning of his, uh, um, Life of Pablo album, where the cow, where the kid's just saying, Ah, oh, yes, Lord, we need the Lord, 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 Lord! Oh my god, like, he I doesn't know what he's really that. saying, uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that's what this feels like, you know? Um, oh, uh, fucking everything we need. An example of his tone deafness, right? This phrase is supposed to be about how, you know, we don't have all the comforts and trappings of life, but as long as we have the tools God has given us this day, we'll be all right. That's real easy to say as a bunch of rich guys saying, we have everything we need. Yeah, it just doesn't resound as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, rich dudes say, we have, yeah, no duh, you got a fucking studio in Wyoming, of course you have everything you need. <laughs> you get fucking God is. I remember I wrote, best song on the album. But his voice is so bad. Oh, his singing voice Kanye. can fuck right off. He, no, like here particularly, it sounds like he just got off of off stage or some shit. And like he's about to lose his voice. And it doesn't sound like that cool sort of impassioned, oh, he's just so into it like a preacher. It sounds like, no, dude, you need to have a drink of water and like sit down. He, <laughs> he sounds fucking <laughs> rough here. Yeah. He sounds awful. And the thing about it is, the production sounds so clean against it, so it just feels like he's rapping over some, like, production that's not mass- Like, like, his voice is not mastered, and he's rapping over this, like, completely already finished product, you know what I mean? So it just feels like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> um, I think it might have been- was it on our last review that Clips showed up? Oh, I forgot about Clips! Yo, reunited! It feels so good? And it feels okay? <laughs> Let's get into it. Use this gospel. Which, again, I think is kind of funny, because he actually doesn't know that really Bible verses. Because remember, he doesn't read books. He doesn't need books. Remember that? Remember when he said that? He doesn't need books? <laughs> he doesn't like reading books or some shit? <laughs> And the only book he's writing is his autobiography on Twitter or some dumb shit. Hey, Muse, cut out all the lights, because he's the light. Huh? Mm. You like that? You like that? And that's so clever? Oh, because all of the lights. We get called halfway believers because we only halfway read Ephesians. <laughs> and the funny thing is you find out, it's just like, but you actually haven't read that much. You you said you didn't. So what did, you can do it at any time. And there's like, there's one interview where he said some shit about like, uh, like, oh, you know, again, going back to arguing with his dad, where he's like, I was arguing with my dad and I was like, oh, I, you know, uh, oh man, I can't have a church without uh, the gospel. Man, you know how much stuff I had to Google now just because of that? And, you know, the interview was like, <laughs> what? Do you not know the Bible's available online? Like, what is it? <laughs> like the way he's saying it's like all the stuff I had to Google. Oh, and, and oh, this is what he said in particular. After all that, he goes after the interviewer laughs, and he goes like, uh, you know, I don't even think uh, Google has all of it on there anyway. You know, so uh, and it's just like, <laughs> wait, does he not think the Bible is online? <laughs> Back when I thought the Book of Job was a job, he dude, he thought he was so fucking clever. Oh, he he saw mm. that it spelled. He's like. I got it, you guys. <laughs> I gotta say that one. <laughs> Again, is there no one to tell him no? Like, ever. No, in he'll scream at them. <laughs> you heard? <laughs> he's, he, and he's not mean. He's focused. <laughs> Somebody stop this man. <laughs> and, you know, like, I was looking at hands-on. Uh, now that you bring up hands-on, uh, I, I wrote down the, the name Tech 9 and I remember no why. It's because this song is very much a, you know, uh, told people God was my mission. <laughs> what have you been hearing from the Christians? They'll be the first ones to judge me. Make it feel like nobody loves me. <laughs> 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 this is the goddamn... I saw this brought up in the Some More News video on cancel culture where it was... I think it was the, the roast of Alec Baldwin. Mm. Where Adam Carolla of The Man Show fame takes the stage, and he just goes, 
And I know there's going to be a lot of SJWs oh, on Twitter tomorrow. <laughs> going to be complaining. And they don't know. And there was like none because people understand what a roast is. And <laughs> they it was like the. I'm expecting the same backlash from the Christians, and you know they're not going to be there for me. It's like, why don't you think that? Like, why do you believe that so strongly of the, I'm making up this narrative that, like, it's like the painting myself to be the victim in the situation before the album even drops of, I know they're going to turn the backs on me after this, and then you look at it. And no, actually, a lot of them are kind of embracing it. What gets embraced is that sort of a what was me narrative, right? Like, uh, because now the Christians listening to the song, oh, but look who's really on them. All those people, oh, see, Kanye, come into the fold. See, we'll accept you. See, we don't care if you're deceitful as long as you're on our side. And I'm not saying that of all Christians. I am saying that, though, of the fucking, uh, you ever see that Netflix series that was about, like, the family and talking about, like, certain sects of Christianity that just happen to be in high levels of positions of power, uh, <laughs> how they interpret, uh, the Bible. <laughs> I was like, just gonna say what I sent you earlier, where Donald Trump Jr. <laughs> oh my tweeted, God. and was what like, What was that even about? It's like, I know the left is gonna, <laughs> the left are gonna, t- no! <laughs> Did you even listen to this album, bro? Like, what? It's, it's about family and the... <laughs> That's my favorite fucking thing, because it was back when Kanye was embracing Candace Owens, and Candace Owens had to act like she was a big fuck Kanye fan, when none of these people give a shit about you, and they won't a week from now. But again, their idea is, well, he's on our side, so fuck it. You know, like, that's legit how they look at it. It's just like, yeah, but the other side's worse, so even though this guy's a hypocrite, and deceitful, but he's our hypocrite and deceitful guy, so we can use him for us, so fuck it. You know, because there's no, like, no one is really grappling with what he's talking about, and most of it is just talking about how you should feel bad for him, but also follow him because he's so great, and he's so good for doing this in the first place, for even deciding to make a Christian album. Shouldn't you just fall on your fucking knees and just be so happy he decided to... And again, like, this song where he's saying, like, all this woe with me shit, I'm not saying, uh, like, I I think any topic can be done well, right? Right. And I wrote down Tech 9 because he had a song called Holier Than Thou. And that song was specifically about how, like, you know, he was trying to get, like, a rapper, on, a Christian rapper on the song. And he was like, you know, we're actually reaching out to, like, Christian artists to try to, you know, because, like, we do feel like we're fallen people. We may not be the best Christians, but we're, like, trying, you know? Like, we're trying to reach out to guys like you and, you know, hear, hear what you had to say, you know, because it's like... I mean, he said something about, like, you know, on the road, it's really hard to be a god, like, you know, uh, to follow the word of God, you know, to stay faithful to your wife, things like that. And and so it's like, okay, I get it. And then what happened was, uh, what he said was, was, like, somebody didn't get back to him. It was, like, some rapper named The Truth, a Christian rapper named The Truth. And one of his publicists, like, didn't like Tech 9 so didn't fucking, you know, complete the deal or whatever. And so he was just like, this is real fucked up. Like, we were trying to reach out to you as people who were trying to, trying to find God and you, and you dissed us. And it's like, you know, it's like, uh, and so basically he was saying, this is like, you know, you think you're holier than us, but who's really holy? You know, like, and the way it was laid out was really cool because it was telling you the case. This is this preempting assumption that people are gonna be so down on him and just going like oh, you know and it's just so like and just the fact that it gets repeated you know like what you've been hearing from the Christians huh it's like shut the fuck up because he said he's not gonna curse he said he you know like that that was the big thing no cursing on the album oh okay now it's good dude Fuck him. Fuck, like, fuck you if you think the extent of uh, uh, loving God and doing the service of God is not saying a bad word. Fuck out of here. You know? Like, what does the bad word mean? What is the context of that word? Because that's what I'm saying. Fuck. I don't give a shit. But I'm not saying the other F word. What's the context of that? Am I saying that towards someone? Is that me? Like, look at context instead of these fucking, again, these signifiers of what Christianity is. Ooh, I didn't put cursing on the album. Ooh, I told people to not have premarital sex. Okay, so the fuck what? What about the fact that you're this uh, multi-millionaire who's telling us that we should follow God and do all these things while you hold on to your money and do nothing with it? What about 
about that, Kanye? <laughs> you know? It's like, let's fucking... Because if you want to talk, like, let's fucking have this discussion. But he obviously doesn't. He just wants to be patted on the back for doing the ultimate good thing and following God. Which, again, it's just like, uh, he didn't get the strong guy, strong man out of Trump, so he's just switching over to something else. You know what I'm saying? And it's so, uh, like, as you say that, like, even if he's being as uh, as honest as he can, like, because he's not engaging with it in a way that is very obvious to see, it comes off like he might be being deceitful, because you obviously don't give enough of a shit to really dig into this shit. What did you give this album? Oh, my lord. Um, I gave it a one. Uh, oh, oh, fuck, we forgot to uh, talk about, uh, use this gospel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't talk about fucking Kenny G and his random ass sax solo. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie though, I, I like this. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. Yeah, it, it was a Kenny G's sax solo by any other name. It's fine, but the placement <laughs> is just yeah. weird. And, and, you know, it, I, I do believe Use This Gospel was one of the best songs specifically because Kanye is not rapping on it. But the rapping isn't necessarily, like, it's, I mean, it's better. It's definitely better. Uh, <laughs> but it's still not really, like, about God for most of it. Like, Pusha T starts off talking about how, uh, uh, well, I mean, there's one part where he talks about his brother and it's like, hey, man, you know, I'm happy we made it. And, and it sounds like he's actually, like, motioning to his brother at that moment, like, yo, dude, I'm happy you're here. I was like, oh, that was a good, like, you know, revelous moment. But it's like, the first verse is like, how could he not be the greatest in my bed under covers when under covers had raided? What? <laughs> how could God not be incredible? I hid under my covers when the police came looking for me. No Malice was basically, his verse was like talking about the, you know, I wasn't doing so good, you know. Like, that at least was more on message. Muse, that was the best verse in the entire fucking album. Because, again, he says, a lot of damaged souls, I done damaged those. And in my arrogance, I took a camera pose. And in that moment, you hear the the idea of him saying, like, how Fuck, like, the disgust with himself. How fucking dare I, like, take pride in the shitty things I did. That was a good fucking, that made me feel a journey. Uh, uh, going back to the song fucking Jesus Walks. That's the big, like, song that, you know, makes people go like, oh, yeah, you know, that Kanye, you know, he, he loves God in some capacity, right? Um, and, but the reason why that song works is because the message of that song is like, I need Jesus, not you need Jesus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a lot less pretentious when you're saying, like, oh, man, it, it, I'm just trying to say the way school need teaches the way Kathy Lee needed preaches. That's the way I need Jesus. You know, it's just like a sort of, like, I'm going through a struggle. In this song, he's talking about, like, I was a fucked up bad person. I was trying to do better. That works. Everything else just sounds like shit. <laughs> and it's just like, as a guy who already made that song, you'd think you'd know how a song like this should work. And all these songs just sound fucking half-assed. So, yes, a fucking one out of five. And I don't want to fucking <laughs> hear the goddamn more of it for, for what it would have to say. It's like, what the, who's? I mean, you know what? Fuck it. Y'all join this goddamn cult if you fucking want to. <laughs> but no thank you. <laughs> Earlier when I said I didn't hate it as much, I mean, I got a two. It's not much higher. Because I, I, I can see, you, you know, the production. The production is definitely fucking dope. Right? In, like, in my in my opinion, the st the strongest tracks, and I'll and I'll give my my uh, my reasons because I know you'll take issue with Salah. Um, <laughs> I'm on a white bike, feeling like a sight bike. <laughs> was that the one? <laughs> I, I was a fan to hear the Yeezus intensity in, mm. in Kanye's voice. Um, if the Hallelujah part didn't go on for way too long, again with another weird effect on it that made it just sound. I don't know what, like, slightly distorted, like you said, maybe sped up a little bit. There's something going on there. Uh, Follow God, hands down, in my opinion, the best track on the album. Uh, on God, uh, Everything We Need, uh, Use This Gospel, and Jesus is Lord. Kind of middle-of-the-road ratings, but I thought they were, you know, in at least in comparison, stronger than the weaker songs on the album, which were uh, God Is, Hands On, Closed on Sunday, and just the kind of overall pointless every hour. I legit, like, you know how I do the first five songs, and if, you know, I give them all zeros, <laughs> like, I don't fuck yeah. it anymore. Like, so I think the third song got, like, a two, 
And like the first five songs other than that were like all zeros. It's just like, this isn't enjoyable. <laughs> Closed on fucking Sunday. Uh, man, I'm just not feeling this shit. <laughs> I, I saw a lot of people saying when Closed on Sunday popped up that that was when they fucking hit stop. Like that was. The, <laughs> no, I think I've given this right, enough I'm head out. time. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I don't blame them. Close on Sunday is th- that's a potential career ruiner. <laughs> Honestly, like, hang it up, dude. What are you? Like it's a it's a fucking novelty song. Like it's it a, really like, oh, is. Look at this Christian singing about Chick Fil A. <laughs> like if this was your first song, you'd be done. Well, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Gone Off Podcast. Thank you very much for checking us out. Uh, if this happens to be the first time listening to our show, all of our old episodes are on Sound are on uh, SoundCloud and more importantly, Spotify. Uh, Spotify is easily the preferred and suggested uh, way to take in this show. Since all the old episodes are there, you can listen to them all in order or catch up on ones you might have missed. Please subscribe to us on uh, YouTube because outside of the show, uh, we both do our own uh, regularly scheduled, regular uh, content. You with the reviews We've got Riff Commas and Riff Break over on our YouTube, so take the time and uh, subscribe so you don't miss uh, the other stuff we do when we're not when we're not reviewing great horror themed or subpar half ass religious albums. Dude, just listen to Lecrae. Like honestly, that's what I got to say at the end of this album. RC is over on Station Head. He's doing the hey. Station Head shows yeah, on a regular sure. basis there. Um, so you can check out what he's doing there. Uh, we both got patrons who can help uh, support us on, as well as our unified uh, Kofi that is uh, ko fi dot com slash going off. Uh, yeah, so that's where some, uh, review requests. You know what I'm saying? Yep. If there's an album that you'd like to hear us talk about, head on over there. One time, uh, fifty dollar uh, donation. Your request will be added to the queue, and we will uh, we, we'll get to it. <laughs> I feel like I gotta say that uh, we're we, going um, through them. We're going through them. You, you guys see it if you're following. You see the Patreon request albums. You know what I'm saying? We ain't slacking. They happen. That about does it. And uh, we thank you very, very, very much for checking us out. So until next week for the Going Off podcast, I'm Muse and I'm the rap critic. And Kanye, you're not making Christianity better. You're just making rap music worse. <laughs>